Welcome to Who We Play For Volunteer Training. This isn't your average volunteer work. You have signed up to save lives. The mission of Who We Play For is to eliminate preventable sudden cardiac death in youth through electrocardiogram heart screenings. We also provide CPR training, AED placement, and help create cardiac emergency response plans. Who We Play For is a nonprofit organization that began with a group of friends honoring their teammate, Rafe Macaron, who passed away in 2007 at the age of 15 after having sudden cardiac arrest at soccer practice. Since then, we have grown to become a leading force in legislation in Florida and nationwide to help implement measures that prevent sudden cardiac death in youth through early detection. You will often hear sudden cardiac arrest referred to as SCA and electrocardiograms referred to as ECG or EKG. Who We Play For brings our equipment and team of staff and volunteers directly to schools, community centers, clinics, and more to make ECGs accessible for all students and families. At an event, there will always be a heart screening director from Who We Play For leading the way. Roles you may fill are managing the check-in process, entering data on the ECG computer, and performing the ECG test. You may also be asked to assist with other tasks such as sanitizing screening tables, carrying equipment, or answering questions from parents or students. But don't worry, you'll never be asked to do anything you aren't able to do or weren't trained to do. When in doubt, always ask your HSD for help. While other more experienced volunteers may be helpful, it is best practice to check with the HSD when you are unsure or have any questions or concerns. Now let's focus on your role in the heart screening process as a volunteer. Before you begin as a Who We Play For volunteer, you will be asked to review and sign our volunteer agreement, which covers topics such as medical privacy and other guidelines. Most importantly, you acknowledge that you have no record of criminal conviction which would keep you from legally being on public or private school property or coming into contact with children. Additionally, all volunteers must understand that any and all health information they come in contact with is confidential. Check-in. You are the first person a parent or student encounters. Be sure to welcome them with a cheerful disposition. This ECG test can be scary for many kids who don't understand it so a friendly face goes a long way towards making them feel comfortable. You will be provided with a list of names on either a printed out spreadsheet or a laptop. Ask for their name and compare it with the list. Place a check mark that they've arrived. Do not scratch out names on the list. You can also then confirm their correct email and phone number and whether or not they have paid. We also have grants available and sometimes offer free sponsored screening in which no payment is taken. It is very important to write down whether they paid or not and what form of payment they used. You can also write the word grant or free when necessary. Once check-in is completed, the student will then wait to be called back for their ECG test. Data entry. Begin by asking the student for their last name. If they registered online, a pop-up will appear after typing the first three letters of their last name. Ask them for their first name and date of birth to ensure it matches before clicking on the name and having the answers autofill. Once the information autofills, all volunteers are required to double check and confirm the guardian email. This is how we return results to the family. If a student did not sign up online, the volunteer must ask each question and enter the responses manually. Please remember, this is a medical test and all names and information should be properly capitalized. Do not write in all caps or in all lowercase. If a student informs you that they have a personal or family history of heart conditions, please indicate that in the notes section with as much detail as possible. What is an electrocardiogram? An ECG is truly a non-invasive test that doesn't hurt at all. Stickers, called electrodes, will be placed on the body, chest, arms, and stomach. Those stickers get connected to a machine, which then reads the electrical activity of your heart, 
allowing the diagnosis of abnormal heart rhythms that could lead to sudden cardiac arrest. The whole thing will take just a few minutes. Good studies have shown that this test has true, life-saving benefits. The ECGs done by Who We Play For are read and interpreted by expert cardiologists and electrophysiologists. If an abnormality is detected, then it gets flagged and the family will be notified. But further testing will be done with a cardiologist to determine if there is a true heart condition. The ECG test. ECG screening rooms and volunteers are divided based on gender. Volunteers are responsible for ensuring that adequate privacy is maintained throughout the screening. In the rooms, windows are covered, doors are closed, and if you are using a privacy divider, ensure that no one can see in. In addition to the privacy of the screening room, volunteers will be handling the student's personal data and are expected to keep all information confidential. When a student enters the room, greet them and ask if they have ever had an ECG test before. If they have not, Explain that the test is completely painless and will only take a few minutes. You will then explain that they need to remove their shirt and lay on the exam table. For females, they should get down to their sports bra or scoop neck tank top, which makes electrode placement easiest. You may encounter students who are uncomfortable in removing their shirts. In that case, you will do your best to correctly place the electrodes while working under and around their shirt. We never force anyone to remove their top. Placing electrodes. Before placing electrodes, make sure the participant is laying as far up on the table as possible. Their head nor their limbs should be hanging off the table. Their legs must be straight, not crossed or bent, and their arms must be flat by their side. Please make sure that all Bluetooth devices are removed from the participant, such as smartwatches, AirPods, cell phone, etc. During the screening, participants must hold still, refrain from talking, and breathe normally. Deep breaths will cause the chest to rise and fall and will show on the ECG recording as wavy bass lines. Connecting the leads. Each lead is marked as follows. RA for right arm, LA for left arm, LL for left leg, and RL for right leg. For this test, the leg leads will be placed on the stomach. V1 and V2 are to be placed on the chest to the right and left of the patient's sternum at the fourth intercostal space. V3 through V6 will be placed under the patient's heart on the left side or for females under the bra strap spaced according to the following directions. At the end of the lead you will find an alligator clip. Gently lift the clip open and slide the electrode tab into the lead clip. Once placed, carefully close it by pushing down on the clip. Be careful because they do break easily. If a lead will not lay flat, you can twist the base of it to adjust until it is laying flat to help obtain a clean trace. Taking the ECG test. After properly placing the electrodes and connecting them to the ECG machine, you may hit record ECG number one button and the trace will begin. The trace will go across the screen from left to right and after completing a full reading across, it will start at the left side of the screen again. If the participant is holding still and breathing normally, the recording should last about 16 to 20 seconds. That's one and a half screens of recording. And then the volunteer can end the recording by hitting the stop record button. At this time, the software will provide a pop-up window if it notices electrodes are in the wrong location. This is your opportunity to fix any electrode placement problems and redo the trace. If the computer does not notice any placement problems, it will provide a final look at the ECG. If there are any problems at all with the recording, the volunteer should hit the trash button and re-record the ECG. If you are unsure if you should redo the trace, please ask a heart screening director from who we play for for help. Though the computer may provide preliminary suggested diagnosis or other details, you are never to read that aloud or let them take a picture of the screen. All tests need full interpretation from expert cardiologists. Some common issues you might encounter. The ECG machine may give you a warning that the person has a high heart rate and you need to retest. If the person is nervous and has a rapid heartbeat, there are some things you can try to help. 
Try distracting them with questions about lighthearted topics. Ask them if they have any questions at all about the test and try to explain it again in a way that would calm them down. Ask them to think about something relaxing. If you've tried everything and you retake the test, but the heart rate is still high, that's okay. Please save the test and thank them for coming. Do not discard the test. Another common error you might receive is limb lead reversal. This means you have likely placed the left side leads on the right side of the body and vice versa. Take a moment to correct the issue and then start the ECG again. This is why it is always important to take a mental note before attaching the leads of the person's right and left. Do not place it on your right and left. Note, if you are 100% sure that you have placed everything correctly and the computer is still saying limb lead reversal, that may be the anatomical placement of the person's heart. So just save the test as usual and the doctor will review and notify the family. Reminder, we never share this information with the person receiving the ECG test. Here are some do's and don'ts of a successful heart screening. Arrive on time or early to meet the heart screening director. Wear a Hui Play For shirt, scrubs or appropriate nice jeans or pants, and comfortable shoes. Stay in contact with the heart screening director and allow them to handle any questions or concerns from the school or screening location. Ask the student if they have ever had a heart test before. If not, help put them at ease by explaining the test. Throughout the test, explain what you're doing and let them know it's almost done. Positive affirmations help, especially when screening younger students. Work to ensure privacy and comfort for the student throughout their experience. Most importantly, remember to keep all information confidential. Never joke about getting an electric shock or other scary things to anyone, regardless of age. You may often hear teachers or parents doing exactly that, so feel free to reassure the student that it isn't true and there is nothing to worry about. Never force anyone to take the ECG if they are having a panic attack or seem very fearful. Please get a teacher, coach, or parent, or your HSD to help calm them down. Do not comment on undergarments or point out anything that could be embarrassing, especially to a kid. Don't force anyone to remove their shirt if they are not comfortable. Don't give feedback or read results aloud. Don't place electrodes directly over a bone. They should always be placed on a muscle or soft tissue. Thank you again for taking time to become a Who We Play For volunteer. We couldn't do what we do without you, and together we will continue to save lives. For every kid who never had the opportunity, this is who we play for. For further information, please contact info at whoweplayfor.org.